radical. So there's a lot of problems around the GTA trilogy. We all know this. Rockstar has a statement though on some things they're going to do to possibly fix the situation. Rockstar Games says, The Grand Theft Auto series and the games that make up this iconic trilogy are as special to us as we know they are to fans around the world. Explain Rockstar in its statement. The updated versions of these classic games did not launch in a state that meets our own standards of quality or the standards our fans have come to expect. We have ongoing plans to address the technical issues and to improve each game going forward. With each planned update, the games will reach a level of quality that they deserve to be. Uh-huh. That's nice. You know, it's nice for Rockstar to actually make a statement that they will eventually get around to fixing the game that people already bought and was released. Now, I don't know. Are they offering refunds for the game to people that actually bought it? Because at least, you know, CD Projekt Red and the PlayStation, uh, on PlayStation 4, they offered refunds. Now, also, here's some big news, some great news for a lot of people that maybe want to play these games on PC. They want to play the original trilogy, but not have to worry about the games bugging out or, you know, the rain or many other issues. But they're actually bringing back the formerly delisted Grand Theft Auto games from PC. So they did a lot here that really angered fans, rightly angered fans, because it's one thing to release a buggy mess, but I don't think it's ever been a situation to where they've not only released a game, a remaster in a buggy state, and had the audacity, the mere audacity, to call it definitive, but then take away your only way to actually play the other okay versions of the game. You know, the audacity of these people to actually release it in that state, knowing full well it was broken. It's not like some surprise, like they're like, oh, wait, it what? You're having issues with it? But then to go and delist the other version, so this is the version that you would have to get. Yeah, you know, some people are saying it's actually even worse than what CD Projekt Red did last year. Uh, didn't Rockstar actually go after some modders that were actually trying to work to fix the actual games. Yeah, so it's just, it's just terrible. Terrible. It used to be Rockstar was one of the last gaming companies you could trust. You know, Nintendo, as far as like, you know, not their policies and their business strategy and the overpricing, but at least the quality of their games. And then Naughty Dog and then, um, you know, Rockstar. And formerly CD Projekt Red. When you think about it, there's not a whole lot of publishers, developers of games that you can actually 100% trust. It seems like there's always something that comes out and it's just a complete and utter mess. And that is sadly the new trend in gaming. You know, release it, get your money up front for it, and, you know, get around to fixing it later. A lot of people are having fun and uploading YouTube videos. Uh, this one channel actually found a marker right in the middle of the world and maybe they just forgot to take it out you know that shows you how quickly this was just crapped out by rockstar you know it, but uh yeah this statement is basic uh, basically saying that they're gonna fix it eventually but it is complete and utter bs what did they say here let's go back to the statement it is complete and utter bs when they say that the games are as special to us as we know they are to fans around the world. If GTA 3 and Vice City and San Andreas was actually really that special to Rockstar and they just weren't, you know, moving on to the next thing, if they were really that special, then they wouldn't have released it in the state it was. It was what I would call a shameless cash grab. It's all it was. It's all it was, you know.